Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Welcome to Ahkam SOS The show that discusses Islamic duties and practices By His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi Hafadullah I'm your host Mohsin Shah And joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'as Assalamu alaikum Sheikhna Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh How are you Sheikh? Alhamdulillah Sheikhna, today we have a new discussion And we're going to discuss inshallah The Jum'ah uh, Salah inshallah So um, With Jum'ah Salah we know that it is wajib in the presence of the Imam uh, However the Imam is in occultation at the moment Can we actually have this special prayer on Fridays? Inshallah A'udhu billah As-sami'i al-alim min ash-shaytan al-rajim Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin Allahumma salli ala muhammad At the time of the presence of the Imam al-Zaman Ajallah Fradjah al-Sharif The Imam Ma'asum alayhi salam it becomes wajib on the mu'mineen to attend and perform the Jum'ah prayer. And um, with regard to the day and age that we live in at the current time, and because the Imam is in occultation and ghaybah, and due to his absence, this salah becomes, according to Samah the Sayyid, Hafadahullah, Wajib uh, takhiri. In other words, it becomes wajib, but with two options. Either you pray the Friday prayer, Salat al Jumu'ah, or the Salat al Duhr, the normal daily prayer that we pray every day in Duhr time. So the uh, Mu'mineen should ch choose the, uh, the ones they want. Either they want to join the Jama'ah in the Friday prayer, they can pray behind the Imam, or they can actually uh, just pray Salat al-Dhuhr and Asr as normal as they used to do so with Jama'ah or Farada. Uh, so that's the hukum for uh, today, day and age, because uh, we don't have Ma'asum alayhi salam within us who can lead the prayer, in which it becomes wajib for us to, to pray. Um, in the situation, um, we are allowed, but the Sayyid says, as a mustahab precaution, which is not wajib, but it's better, it's mustahab. For the one who prays Salat al-Jum'ah, the two rak'ah, Friday prayer, so is to also pray Salat al-Dhuhr with it. Okay, ihtiyat. It's ihtiyat istihbabi, that you pray Salat al-Jum'ah, and then you add to it Salat al-Dhuhr again, um, as a mustahab precaution. MashaAllah, Hassan. Shaykhna, um, you know, is it okay for one to choose one week I'm going to do Jum'ah prayer, one week I'm going to just pray Dhuhr, you know, can we alternate? Or is it you make one niyyah and you must stick with that? As I've said, the Sayyid gave the choice for the Mu'mineen uh, as a wajib takhiri, that, that this wajib is optional. Either you choose Salat al-Dhuhr or Salat al-Jum'ah and uh, you can once pray the Jum'ah, and once you don't go to, to the mosque and you pray at home, for example, Dhuhr and Asr, that's fine, there's no issue with it. It's just that you have two options. And the best option that Sayyid offers is that you to, to pray both of them together. So you pray the Jum'ah first, and then you pray, for example, uh, Dhuhr afterwards, and so forth. MashaAllah. Shaykhna, the actual prayer, the Jum'ah prayer, is it different to uh, you know, the other prayers that we have? Salat al-Jum'ah, Initially, it begins with um, the Adhan. So the Mu'addin, would, um, he does the Adhan first. And then the Imam stands after the end of the Adhan. He's not going to start straight away the, the Iqama and the pray of the Jum'ah. Initially, he goes to the uh, podium and he starts to give the sermons. There are two sermons in the Jum'ah prayer. So initially, he will be holding a staff on his right hand as one of the mustahabbat of Salat al-Jum'ah. And then he begins the sermon, the first sermon, after the Adhan, straight away, he starts the, the sermon, the first sermon. He begins the first sermon initially with the praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And after praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
he begins his, his first sermon. So that sermon would be, for example, after saying, Ibadullah, attaqullah, usikum attaqullah, usli nafsi. So that's the beginning of it. And then he starts his own uh, lecture or the sermon uh, in the first sermon. And that would be topics about akhlaq, taqwa, God fearing, uh, and so forth. So that's the first uh, khutbah. And then when he finishes the first khutbah and sermon, he goes and sits. Must have to sit for a few seconds or a minute, one or two minutes. And then he again stands up for the second sermon and khutbah. In the second sermon, again he starts praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a short praise. And then he begins the second sermon and khutbah. And of course the second sermon would be about the current affairs. It could be political, economical, educational, social, and so forth. Whatever matters the current mm -hmm. uh, affairs of the community, of the Muslim community in overall. And um, after uh, the Imam finishes the second khutbah, he starts to read uh, invoking blessings on Muhammad and Muhammad alayhim. And then the Mu'mineen would stand up by mentioning Imam al hujjah Ajad al Sharif. They stand up and uh, the Imam, after he finishes this invoking of blessings and salawat, he goes to the sajjada, the prayer mat, and he starts to recite the iqamah. When he starts to recite the iqamah, then he starts the salah of Jum'ah, the official Friday prayer. How is it done? Basically, the Friday prayer is similar to Salat al-Subh, to Rak'ah, but there's some ad additions to the salah. In the Friday prayer, um, you read first, in the first rak'ah, Hamd and Surah. And of course, Mustahab to read Surah Jum'ah yes. on, on the Surah uh, after the Hamd. And then, when you finish Surah Al-Jum'ah, let's say, uh, the Imam would raise his hands, both hands, for the Qunut. Okay, and this is in the first rak'ah? In the first rak'ah, okay. before going to the Ruku'ah. Mm -hmm. And here is the Qunut. In the first rak'ah of Salat Al-Jum'ah. Then he goes to Ruku'ah, and then Sujood, and then he stands up for the second rak'ah. In the second rak'ah, he also reads Alhamd and any surah, short surah or long surah. And then he goes after reading the surah in the second rak'ah to ruku'ah. Okay. When he stands from the ruku'ah, he also raises his hands again and he does uh, the qunut again. Mashallah. So second qunut. So in Salat al-Jum'ah, there are two qunuts in the first okay. rak'ah and second rak'ah. So one rak is before the uh, ruku' in the first rak'ah. Exactly. Which is traditional for us to do in the second. And then the second qunut is in the, after the ruku'ah. Exactly. Um, in the second rakah, before, after, before sujood. Exactly. After okay. the ruku', the imam, he does the qunut, and of course the followers will do the same thing. And when he finishes the qunut, because he already did the ruku', after the qunut, he goes straight towards the sujood, and then uh, tashahud and taslim, and he ends the salah. So that's uh, salat al-jum'ah, which is sufficient, according to Sayyid Fatwa, uh, to be... Uh, instead of Salat al-Dhuhr. And of course, the Imam reads the Hamd and Surah in both rak'ah, in Salat al-Jumu'ah, the Friday prayer, he reads them aloud, audible, okay. in, this, in this way. After uh, Salat al-Jumu'ah, the, the two rak'ah, the Imam, again, he stands up and he does the um, Iqamah for Salat al-Asr. Oh. There's no more Dhuhr for it. Yes. He does the Salat Asr, which is normal Salah, as we do in the Jama'ah. And the Salah is done, completed, and the followers and the Ma'mumin have completed their Salat Al-Jum'ah with the two sermons. And of course, as I've said, we say this fatwa is as a mustahab precaution, that you may pray Salat Al-Jum'ah, and then you pray Dhuhr Salah as well with it. So now you have three sets of Salah, mm -hmm. Friday prayer, Dhuhr, and Asr. But it's optional. It's mustahab. Um, Shaykhna, well, I've got a question in regards to reciting audible salah. Um, can you recite 
Zuhur uh, on a Friday, audibly, like with, with, with a loud voice? To recite Salat al-Dhuhr, of course, even if you pray Friday at home by yourself, individually, um, or Jama'ah, uh, only the exception in Salat al-Dhuhr of day of the Jum'ah, only, that you're allowed to um, uh, recite uh, in Salat al-Dhuhr, Alhamd and Surah audible, aloud, in other words. Only exception in Salat al-Dhuhr, otherwise in, in Yom Jum'ah. Otherwise, in other days of uh, Salat al-Dhuhr, like Saturday, Sunday, and, and so forth, you're not, you're not allowed to raise your voice. You have oh, to read them wow. silently. Okay. Only the exception is in Salat al-Dhuhr of the day of Jum'ah. Mm -hmm. You're allowed to recite Hamd and Surah in both Rak'ah, first and second, uh, mm -hmm. aloud and audible. Is it preferred or is it just acceptable? They say it says as Mustahab. A oh, caution. It should be audible. So mustahab wow, precaution, which means oh, okay. uh, istihbab ihtiyati. Oh, mashallah, mashallah. Shaykh, now, in regards to uh, the dhuhr prayer, so I'm praying, I'm going to pray Jummah prayer, and I'm going to pray dhuhr. Which one should I read first? Should I read uh, the dhuhr prayer first after the adhan, and then listen to the khutbah and, and pray the Jummah prayer? Or should I listen to the khutbah, do the Jummah prayer, and then recite dhuhr? I mean, either way is, is, is permissible and allowed. So you can first, for example, let's say before the Imam comes, or let's say um, there's Adhan was called. So you, you stand up as follower of the Imam. Uh, if you want to pray, do this mustahab or um, precaution that Sayyid mentions. Uh, you stand up, you do Salat al-Dhuhr first, and then the Imam starts the Friday prayer. So you join the Imam and the Jama'ah. With the Friday prayer, and then you pray with the Imam uh, Salat al-Asr afterwards. So you've done first Dhuhr, and then Friday prayer, and then Salat al-Asr. Or you can choose to wait with the Imam, pray Salat al-Friday prayer, Jum'ah, and then there's a gap, you know, the break of Indeed. Mustahabbat and Tasbihat. You stand up quickly and you you uh, pray Salat oh. al-Dhuhr. And then also you join the Jama'ah again for Salat al-Asr. So it's up to you, before or after the Friday. There is no way you could do Dhuhr after Asr, as in you do the, the Jummah prayer, then you pray Asr, and then you pray Dhuhr after. No, as we mentioned last uh, seasons, that uh, the Dhuhr must be before Asr. Mm -hmm. It's sequential. It's wajib that you must pray first Dhuhr, and then you pray Asr. Because there's no way you can switch between them and uh, pray Asr first, no? I see, I see. Sheikhna, when I go to Jummah, um, I see sometimes people coming in late. Sometimes people deliberately come for the prayer. They don't really come for the khutbah. The two khutbahs at the beginning of the prayer, how important are they? Some even say it is as valuable as the prayer itself. The Sayyid mentions here that um, it is mandatory, of course, to attend for the khutbah and to listen to them as precaution, as ihtiyat, wujubi, uh, that the one should uh, listen to the both khutbah and sermons. And um, of course, um, they should not talk to each other. If you have a friend or a mobile phone, you shouldn't talk to them. Mm -hmm. And you make sure you pay attention to the khutbah itself, because that's part of the salah of Friday prayers. Um, it's important that we, we um, listen to these uh, um, two khutbah and sermons because they are part of the salah. And also, it's good because at the end of the day, you get the advice of taqwa, God-fearing, hadith, narrations, uh, holy verses, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day, the blessed day of Friday. So it's good for the mu'mineen to uh, join and, and listen to the khutbah. They will benefit. It's not just the salah and you just walk off from the mosque. So it's important that we listen, we get the admonishment and advice, and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remember the Day of Judgment, remember hell and paradise, and remember that one day we will face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. MashaAllah. There are a lot of benefits from, from actually going to the, the um, 
you know, the khutbah and the Jummah prayers. I remember that there's a big sense of like community when you go there. You get to see a lot of your relatives, you get to see the community, you get a little catch up. And sometimes it's tea and biscuits if you're lucky. <laughs> Sheikhna, when it comes to organizing uh, Jummah Salah, do we need the permission of the Maraja and, and the Fuqaha? As in that, you know, it is uh, acknowledged and it is, um, you know, uh, condoned by these maraja that we can go and do this uh, Jummah khutbah or can we just go and attend anyone? No, it doesn't It doesn't need any permission from the marja or the scholar you follow. But what is important that you have to go back to the fatwa of your marja to see if he allows uh, this salah to be uh, performed because in the past of uh, century, some of the ulama didn't allow it uh, to be you know, established the, salat, the Friday prayer because of the absence of the Imam as Zaman Ajal Farjah al Sharif. So that's why um, some of them would say, No, you're not allowed to perform the Salah in the absence of the Imam. So it was something between, between Wajib and Haram. You know, you're not allowed oh, to wow. perform it. You're not allowed because the Imam is not there. So, Alhamdulillah, today's fatwa mainly is that you're allowed to choose from Dhuhr or Friday prayer. So, if your marja and alim allows it, that's fine. It's your choice to pray Dhuhr or to pray the Friday uh, pr uh, prayers. Shaykhna, can one perform Jummah at home by himself? And if he does so, does he have to also pray the Dhuhr prayer as well? Salatul Jummah must be performed uh, in the, in the Jama'ah. Ah. There are uh, conditions for uh, such salat to be performed, um, unlike other salat in which you can perform them with the jama'ah or uh, individually at home. Uh, Friday prayer is there that you pray with the jama'ah, there's the imam, and there's a, enough distance between one mosque and the other mosques and so forth, the conditions for you know, establishing this salah, and it must be with jama'ah. That's part of it because there's khutbah. Who are you going to listen to if you do it yourself, by yourself? Who are you going to listen to? Who's going to read the khutbah? And to whom? So it must be uh, performed with the jama'ah. That's how it works. Shaykhna, if we have uh, all the criteria met for Jummah prayer, does the Jummah prayer actually replace uh, Doha? Does it become obligatory? If the one um, applies the criteria for the Salat al-Jum'ah, and he prays the Friday prayer according to this criteria. Uh, in this case, uh, the Dhuhr Salah would not be mandatory to pray. Um, as I've said, you have the option to either to pray, as the Sayyid says in his fatwa, wajib takhiri, either to pray Dhuhr or the Friday prayers. So if you meet all the criteria and con conditions of the Friday prayers, khalas, you don't have to pray any more Dhuhr. But as a mustah precaution, the Sayyid says that it's, it's better than to pray uh, Dhuhr as well. When you pray Salat al-Dhuhr, uh, when you pray Salat al-Jum'ah, uh, Jum you pray also Salat al-Dhuhr as well, either mm -hmm. before or after, after the, uh, the Friday prayers. So, uh, let, me, let me get this right. So the Sayyid says that if you perform the Jum'ah Salah, it lifts the obligatory uh, condition of Dhuhr prayer. Exactly. But it's, it, it, it's mustahab to actually pray the Dhuhr, Dhuhr as, well. as well. Exactly. Okay, mashallah. Thank you very much, Sheikhna, for the interesting discussion. And thank you to all the viewers for joining us. Inshallah, we'll have a new topic on the next episode of Hakam SOS. See you then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. <laughs>